Hi and welcome to Tweet Street. I'm Mick Tiffany and I'm a novice lizard canary keeper and breeder. Join me on my journey as I strive to breed birds good enough for the show bench. Well, good day again everybody. This is episode 13 of Tweet Street. We'll have a look at how the chicks getting on, the eyes of the chicks and second time looking for the eggs. We've now got nine eggs, uh, three lots of three and we'll see how they're going to go. But it's really all about the chicks and how they're getting on and uh, we're going to be discussing that a little bit later. Uh, also, um, the, the feathers are slowly coming through. You can see that chick's got some what we call in pin. Those feathers are coming through. And also um, how the rasers are getting on. As you can see, there's been a bit of a change in the rasers. Um, and that's really, really interesting. Uh, they've been very, very busy. Um, the hen bird was outside in the aviary. She got a hell of a lot of fitness. She, she got herself well. She was calling an awful lot to the, uh, her mate and she started picking bits up so i decided i'll put them to well i put them in a cage next to each other with a divider see how they're getting on uh, after a day or so i put some nesting material in and immediately she built a nest extremely quickly so um i today just today uh moved the divide out and then out together and we'll see how we get on but she's super fit now which was really really good i, I i'm so happy that uh, I wasn't expecting to do much with her this year because of how poorly she looked, um, but now she looks so well, and uh, she looks like she wants to go down. So, and I'll, I'll let her do that. So that's a really nice little success story for her. So that's fantastic, and uh, obviously we'll see how they get on um, over the coming weeks. So I've made the usual. Um, Mix up for the birds, for the young, uh, they're eating plenty, um, some spinach, pearl more beads soaked. Um, add, give them a whiz round, add some soak seed into the mix and then some dried egg food and uh, I mix all that up and um, distribute that between the chicks and they are quite enjoying it. Um, now the, the first one is, uh, this is the cage three bird she was tucking in as you can see um, and she's feeding the chicks really well uh, all the chicks were eating very well after the initial start uh, the ones obviously I had to give a bit of um, hand feeding to in, in cage nine uh, they're now being fed fine by their parents but this was the bird in cage three she had two chicks um, at this point they were six days old and they seemed to be doing fine um, and then during the um, this is her feeding the chicks on day six and as you can see both chicks being fed well both taking food um, unfortunately overnight one of the chicks died um, it was in the nest, it was at the bottom, it had been trampled and it was flat. Um, not sure what quite what happened, whether she was, the, the parent bird was startled in the night and jumped up and injured the, the chick or, or what, I don't know. Weather-wise during the week it's been really, really funny. We've had some, um, even at midnight, um, one night 18 degrees centigrade the following night you're down to five six degrees and it's been doing that up and down all week even today um you know the sun's out but it's still it's still it's still chilly so whether that's got to play a part or, or not i don't know but something happened and unfortunately uh, we've, we've lost a chick um it, it does happen very sadly sometimes um Sometimes, you know, if they're not being fed, you can easily see it's because they're not being fed and it's a fault of the, the new parent. But as you can see, the chick got quite a bit of food um, and, you know, it just it, it just died. So not quite sure. Unfortunately, the, the cameras weren't on it overnight. It would have been under, the, you know, to see if the bird had been startled or something like that. I, I really don't know. Um, quite sad to see. Um, but it is part, unfortunately, sometimes of 
of the hobby uh, they don't all make it so I'm making sure that extra chick is getting plenty of food now and uh, I'm, I'm giving it a bit of hand food reading food as well as the uh, the mother so what's been happening with the rest well we've gone from this happening um, <laughs> the, the chicks struggling to get out their eggs which they do obviously uh, get out they're very it takes a lot of energy for a chick to escape the shell if you remember before we said about how they developing the egg in the shell and um, there's a little bit of air there's an air sac in there and um, just give her enough to fill their little lungs with a little bit of air to try and break free uh, they pet around the inside of the egg and and they come through and this one as you can see it's, it was absolutely shattered when it came out um, a bit of course it did successfully hatch as did two of the other eggs and then just a few days later this is uh, these chicks are now on day 11 as you can see all very hungry all very happy all calling for food you'll notice around the edge of the nest that uh, there's a buildup of poo now the uh, parent birds have slowly given up tidying that up and they're making starting to make a bit of noise in the nest which in the wild would be quite a dangerous thing obviously because predators could hear um, but these guys are rather fortunate they're, uh, they're in a cage on their own without any hassle so and they're getting fed and you can see from this now that um, on top of the heads you can just see a bit of feather forming you can see the ones that are going to get a bit of uh, yellow feather in the center of the head there the chick in the middle it looks like one's a non-cap it's going to have no yellow and one's a broken cap uh, in fact i think two are broken caps by the look of it one's got half and half uh, and you get a complete idea now of what it's going to look like um, the feathers are slowly going to be coming through that's what we call in pin where the feathers they come out like a shoot in a sheath and then um, those feathers emerge from that and very quickly they feather up uh, the birds need to get a set of feathers as quickly as possible out in the wild they need to get out that nest as quick as possible for safety reasons this is why you tend to find that birds will fly around as quick as they can looking a bit not their best with their best coat of feathers and um, that comes when they molt in a few months time uh, which is what they need to do they've, they've got that quick coat of feathers which gets them to safety and the next thing is they want to look pretty for each other and that's what they'll do and you can also see now that the eyes are fully open and the eyes are really interesting uh, and I'm going to have a little chat about that right, and now as it comes to the eyes the eyes of a bird take up a huge huge part of the skull and they're incredibly important to the birds and different birds have different types of eyes and some birds have two foveas at the back of the eye these are areas uh, void of blood vessels where they can the images are much sharper then because there's no blood vessels in the way to diffuse things and some have two hawks as an example will have two that they, they can see fantastic distances and they can see a hell of a lot sharper than we can some birds have binocular vision um, similar to us um, so the two eyes facing forwards and, and that allows um, the, uh, the animal with binocular vision to be able to judge distance as well as just see something. Some birds have monocular vision, uh, eyes pointing sideways on, uh, great for safety you can see what's sneaking up virtually behind you and you can keep an eye on what's going in front and uh, uh, and that's the way they work it, it depends on what they're doing to the different things also birds uh, have the ability to um, they can see parts of the ultraviolet spectrum that, that we don't and so when we see two birds that look identical um, to us to a bird they look completely different because they can see different colors that we just can't perceive uh, and again other things like um, berries fruits food for the birds um, they have colors that they can see that we don't so they can spot these colors when they're flying around and at great distances because they can see so much further than we can and in so much finer detail 
and a lot of this food, berries and the like, will, will stand out. And they're easy. It makes you know it's just nature being fantastic, isn't it? And and they um, and they can see their food easier, uh, and they can also see you know the likes of us um, <laughs> coming at them a lot easier. Um, I suppose it's a little bit like because their their actions, their instincts are quicker than us. Um, when we walk up to a, a tortoise walking around, we can easily walk up and pick it up. The poor old tortoise is thinking, groggy, he come out of nowhere. Um, now for a bird, we're the tortoise. We're moving quite slowly. Uh, our actions are probably very slow and they can see us uh, a mile off. And uh, and that's you know, that's one of the differences that, uh, you know, it's nice to appreciate. So sighting birds is fantastic and um, you know, and, and it's really useful for them. It, it keeps them uh, keeps them safe and well. They can see their food. It must really help when they uh, are going from one country to another when they're flying and migrating. And uh, it's just one of the another fascinating fact about birds. Um, I get a lot of this information off the internet. This is not me being clever. This is Mick, Mick reading and then <laughs> Mick telling you what he's read. And one of the books I've read recently, or recent, I've read this several times. It's called Bird Sense uh, by Tim Burkhead, uh, who's a professor, and he loves his birds. And what he's got in these his books are fantastic. That one's called Bird Sense, and it's about all the senses of the birds. And I'll probably, you know, just chat every now and then about other senses that they have as they, as, as you know, as I see something happening with the chicks like these. You know, the eyes are opening. I thought, mm, let's do eyes and let's do sight. And, uh, and and we'll go through there. So uh, yeah, that's what's been happening with the with the chicks. They're developing. They're making a bit of noise. Uh, they're seeing a little bit more, and they're growing. Well, another thing I've uh, I've had to do is I've had to wring some of the birds' legs. Uh, you saw me get the rings in a, a previous episode, the red ones, and. Um, this was the time when we see the poo around the edge of the nest it's a good time to I think ring the chicks there's no chance that the adult birds will throw that chick out in error so I get them um, as soon as you get them out of the nest they will poo so always put a tissue underneath uh, they've got four toes one's rear facing and three front facing so with your thumb carefully fold the rear facing one back it tends to be the longest and then you get the ring it's a solid piece uh, of metal uh, of aluminium so you have to be very careful you slide it over those three toes the forward facing toes gently push it over the knuckle and then over the rear facing toe and pull that one through and then you just spin the the ring round just to make sure it's nice and free and you've got some bling on your bird there you go nice and easy lemon squeezy all right well i let you have a little view of me ringing a few birds uh, in the background i will mention what was in cage and avery magazine this week they had a great write-up on the 25th anniversary show for the southern lizard canary club and uh, it's not one I've been to as yet. I hopefully I'll get to the 26th uh, annual show, which will be very nice. Uh, there are quite a few different people. There. They have 118 um, lizard canaries benched in the show, uh, which is a great amount of birds. Uh, and I'll read off a few of the names if that's okay. So overall best in show was Tony Horton. Uh, but also, uh, you've got a few, what I like is, it's not just one person winning everything and everyone else is struggling. It's, it's really nice and even across the board. Um, so it's also well done to Gary McCarthy, David Newton, Nigel Higgins, Hugh Evans, Mike, Mike Atkinson and Ian Adcock. And especially Andy Beasley. Now Andy done that great talk on uh, introduction to Lizard Canaries uh, as a standalone show here which was fantastic he got top spot with uh, a gold clear cap cockbird and a gold broken cap cockbird so well done andy um nice to see you doing well there and also i've got to mention me bestie me birding bestie bob snedden gets a mention in there as well 
Uh, they spelt his name wrong. The shame of it all. Bless him. But Bob Snedden, it says, in the novice section, had a clean sweep taking best novice silver, gold and over year, as well as best second best novice. Well, I'm not sure what that bit means. The sec best second best. He repeated this feat in the novice non colour head section. His best novice bird was a broken cap gold hen that carried good ground colour, breastwork and spangle. Also, best novice over year with a notable visit canary. Fantastic work, Bobby. And um, obviously we work closely together with our birds, sharing birds and uh, information, helping each other out. So I'm really glad you've done well there. This year I hope to get there myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the competition rocking and rolling, and uh, we, yeah, we'll end up outside fighting the car park, but we'll be happy. See you later, everybody. Enjoy the week. Hope your birding's going really well, and we'll see you all soon. Bye bye.